So, um, during this encounter, uh, <laughs> an unfamiliar devil appeared, absconding with Lulu. Um, after you guys have defeated this knight, who's named himself as Haruman, he briefly mentioned that he was one of the Hellriders that had not abandoned Zariel. Um, the black smoke uh, still sort of flowing over the hillside. Um, <clears throat> and uh, his nightmare steed has gone free. Um, you guys will be level 8, but you do, you gotta uh, find a place to have a long rest. You could do it anywhere, really. Now I will just be quiet and uh, let you guys have at it. Um, after seeing the nightmare run away, I'll uh, just kind of skip every other thing and say, well, that's heartwarming, but that doesn't change the fact we are now royally screwed. <laughs> yeah. Words, Mavathor. Can we get some rest? Doesn't sleep. Uh, yeah. Throwing out the effects of that potion. Created will be like, we don't need sleep. <laughs> Please, yes, we need yes, sleep. We we need sleep. <laughs> now yeah. are we royally fucked, Mavathor? I'm covered in blood and throw up and tears. Please. Well, our ticket out of here is uh, somewhere between this and uh, uh, Nessus right now, so... What's that? Layers That's... of Hells. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I still think we should get to sleep. Yeah. I'm not saying no to that. I'm just uh, saying uh, we could maybe... probably be looking through the Avernian wasteland for years without ever actually finding the sword. I don't know. Well, uh, that. Well, I think we have a lead. How so? You know, you know during that ordeal. I myself shot an arrow <laughs> that told me the Lulu descended into another layer of Avernus. I gathered that. Do you know which one? Absolutely. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So okay. we we have uh, a one in eight chance of planes of massive size. So. Make a history check for me, Crayley. Okay. <laughs> Crayley is feeling the potion. Give him Ooh. some bardic inspiration? Or is it too late for that? Uh, no, it's not too late. Okay, you get some bardic inspiration. So, 1d6. It's 1d8. Oh, wait, no, it's not 1d8 oh. until we rest. Never mind. Uh, yeah, okay. it's 1d6. Okay. Why won't it let me... There it is, okay. Uh, 1d6. Ooh, nice! <laughs> 11. Feeling very inspired. <laughs> I'm already dead to use my inspiration, so... Yep. Um... What is the total of the roll? Sorry? 11. 11? Mm -hmm. <laughs> in the 
uh, with the confidence throwing through flowing through your um, body right now, Crayley. Uh, some quick flashes of memory come to the top of your thoughts from before you came to Avernus. As all this was still unraveling in um, Baldur's Gate, there were several instances where you guys had come across different sources of information regarding Zariel and the Nine Hells. And you remember seeing some images in uh, a journal found in the Tham Van Thamper's mansion uh, with an image in it resembling the demon that appeared, the, sorry, the devil that appeared, that you kind of recognize. And you don't remember all the details, but you do remember that um, this devil, uh, this devil's name was Bell, and he um, is the forge master of Zariel's army. Uh, and he resides on the second layer of the Nine Hells in Dis. And that is, of course, if your memory in this confident state is serving you r correctly. Probably not. But maybe I skew the information a little bit. <laughs> well, Navathor, <laughs> or anybody, you know, I think I remember a journal from somewhere up above. Uh, the devil that we saw that I tried to save Lulu from is named. Bull? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something along those lines. <laughs> and Bull. he was the tailor to Zario. I just, I absolutely know that for a fact. Oh, that's really and, cool. Yes. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. I know for a fact, I just, my memory is sharp as ever right now. Layer two through four. I just, I know that's where we need to go. Two through four. four. Yep. I think we should look for the tailor of Zario. Named Ball. Ish. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, just going to look at Creeley a few times and blink before he just starts to walk away. If I could give you triple DM inspiration, Creeley, I would do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe help with this hole uh, in my chest. <laughs> Breathing's a little difficult. Right okay, so two to four layer bell bull tailor. Okay, okay. Absolutely. Can we get some sleep though? With some rest? I would, I would love that. I crazy just gets on his knees and just flops to the ground. <laughs> okay, well, There's I a guess better... Crayley's not on the first watch. <laughs> oh, watch? What do you mean? Oh, we have to take turns, like, watching over the camp while the others rest. You don't, you don't have to do that. You know that, right? What are you talking about? It's dangerous out here. Um, Lep just holds out his hand and, like, Point. I don't think points just touches the air above him, and this like well, I don't want to describe it, but that happens. <clears throat> uh. 
Um, we'll probably treat this maybe a little bit like the uh, hut spell or whatever. So like, you know, like kind of like a Harry Potter tent. Um, why don't you, as you invite your companions into this uh, space, uh, why don't you describe um, what, what its interior is like f for them when when you all enter it? Come on, guys, come in, come in. And it looks completely different. It's like a bed of flowers. It is like it looks so lavish, so courtly. There's actual beds. There's a little like water fountain. It looks so nice, so floral, so many colors. Like a rainbow just threw up on it. <laughs> and, there, and there's a bed for you, and a bed for you, and a bed for you. And um, yeah. He jumps on the bed and hugs the pillow. <laughs> <laughs> like belly flap hugs the pillow. Yeah, I thought you guys would have done this before. Or is this not something you guys don't normally do? It's not that we don't do, it's just more that we can't. Um, well, come on in. Come on in. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. You guys climb into this um, resting place, a small piece of the Feywild that uh, your new companion has brought with them. Um, you guys don't have to necessarily set watches as you rest here in the magical sphere. Um, but during your rest, is there anything any of you would like to do or talk about or anything? Yes. Um, I imagine at some point Lep will come up to both Fairly and Mavithor and be like, Hey guys, um... I know the time isn't up yet, but I just wanted to see what you guys' thoughts were about those, uh, uh, contracts. Uh, Mavithor just throws one of the pillows in his face and goes back to sleep. <laughs> Okay, so he is still undetermined. What about you, Kayla? <laughs> uh, how long are the effects of this potion? Uh, I think it lasts an hour. Oh. Really, maybe in a state of recovery from the hole in the chest, we'll, we'll... say in kind of a fugue state. What is Twig's opinion? I don't know. I'll have to get him. I think he's sleeping under my pillow right now. <laughs> uh, Twig says, um... Well... You see, Lep's service to the courts are, are new. Uh, his service is just blossoming. It is his nature, both in duty and in DNA, I suppose, that um, he would want to make these kinds of arrangements. You would be helping him grow, if you agreed to them. Uh, but 
I would not want to influence your choices one way or another. I am simply along for the ride to make sure that my companion here does not make any irreparable mistakes, and of course holds the Feywild in courts in high esteem at all times. Yes, praise the Sealy. Can I make some adjustments to the contract? What adjustments? Can you pass it along to me, and I'll write them down? Um, the contract just appears out of thin air, and let points to it. What do you want to make? Uh, writing this down real quick. I just want to clarify before I throw my end of the deal. What did you want in return? Oh, um, a favor. A favor. And I think we made some specifications that, like, it wouldn't cause any harm to you or the other people here or... Did I even want to do more things? I don't quite remember. I'm still kind of sleepy. Well, Kray Crayley's going to write down, um, you know, it's good that it says it wouldn't cause harm to anybody here, but also to ensure that we help both Sylvie and Mavathor. And Smiler's done nothing but help us along this journey, help Smiler achieve all of their goals and to ensure <coughs> we do not Um, do not negatively impact those that we care about back home. Um, and because Crayley's kind of in this fugue state of trying to heal and sleep and recover, um, this is what his, his contract looks like. Okay, <laughs> so okay. Can read that. <laughs> yeah, Lep looks at it and says, well, I already made a contact with Sylvie, so her, I will, I'm obligated to help her. Um, this one was mainly meant for you, but if it was also to help Smiley, I would also want his signature on this well. And that with those contractors would be helping him, so. Well, I, I think would, would like to request that all three of them are taken care of and my signage of this ethereal paper. Well, then I'm gonna need more than just a favor if I'm not helping just you through this contract. What would you like in return? Uh, and he whispers the twig, what's a good thing to ask for? I don't want to ask for a soul, that's weird. I feel like icky. Sorry, I missed that last part. Do you need me? Yes. Oh. <laughs> um, Lep had asked Twig, because out of character, Xander doesn't know what he wants from this. Um, but the concept with Crayley would now be extending to both helping him along with helping Smiler and Navathor. So and Lep doesn't think... Those it, back home. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it would be more from Lep. So Lep is like, he doesn't want just a favor. And he asked Twig what would be, like, more powerful than that to, like, like, what would be of equal value, I guess. Since he's helping more than just Crayley, but only Crayley's signature is going on this. Mm. 
he's trying to figure out what more would he be wanting from Grave. And he didn't want his soul feels weird and icky. And just not a good thing. Uh, Twig says, um... <clears throat> these all read to me as noble requests. Uh, I'm going to have to leave you to your own devices on this one, Lep. You're going to have to learn how to make your own decisions, and now is as good a time as any. If you want something more oh. from him, then it should come from you. Oh, okay. Um, Lep goes back to Crayley and says, I will need to get, I will need some time to think about what else you can offer me for this contract. So, Crayley will offer not spoken, but Crayley will Kaylee will pull out the his mother's bow and offer that as part of the contract. That does have a lot of memories with it. A lot of emotions. Emotions. I would prefer to say. So this is my mother's bow. Oh. This is my mother who helped protect my family, who lost her life because of it. Okay. I would but... never want to part with this bow, Lep. But my mother has passed, and I am offering it as part of this deal to signify. the importance of my desire for not only obviously myself, but my friends here to get out and potentially achieve what they've been looking for. Okay. Well, I... I won't be taking the f the physical bow. That will still be yours. But the memories, the dreams, the emotions attached to it is what I would be taking. That and the favor, of course. Well, maybe I can just do this. Maybe good enough. Would I forget her? I mean, you would still have memories of her. But anything associated with Bo, you would probably forget. Would I hold on to the pain of her? That, that would probably go to, I mean, to all memories, all emotions. I think that is a fair deal for what you're asking. And on the contract, it'll, instead of favor, it'll, wh what he just said will be written out. And he'll hold out a flower pen to you with the contract. What do you say? Knowing my mother And what she fought for. She put herself before others. And even though it cost her her life. Mm. 
I think it's right to protect my friends that are alive now. And I'll sign it. And offer the bow. Wonderful. Um, Blood takes the contract, takes Mavitos and rips in half since it's of no use now. And he just, I imagine, like, puts his hand over the bow and whatever color or energy with it just goes into him. But, yeah, you can keep the physical bow. I don't want that. But I will take the men. Okay. Maybe. Oops, sorry to ignore that attack. That is not me attacking. <laughs> Just... You keep your emo- <coughs> you keep your emotions until the contract is fulfilled. Okay. Okay. I was about to remove all the bonuses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Lep isn't taking the physical bow. Just any memories or emotions or anything associated. And you take those emotions and memories immediately? No, it... Um, when the contract is fulfilled. When the yeah. Okay, so I still get to hold on to my mother's death. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awesome. Great. Um, and GM, I don't know if you let me do that thing that we were talking about, if that's the possibility or not. Um, I, I don't. Um, taking the eight hours of long rest to cast a spell. Oh, yeah, you're more than welcome cast to do that. Hours. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it would just be, um, um, I'll pull it up. Called Plant Grove. Yeah. You're, even though, though even though you only have to go into a meditative t- trance, it still takes four hours. So what you're giving up is your long rest. Yeah. Uh, what's is the spell that you cast? Uh, plant grove. Oh. Um, it you can either cast it as an action or you can cast it for eight hours. Gotcha. Um, eight hours. Let me think what it says. You enrich the land. All plants in a half a mile radius, then start on point, become enriched one year. The plants get twice the normal amount of food when harvested. Mm. I imagine it's just left, just not trying to recreate what Smiler did, but just trying to, like, just help. Sure. Uh... Now, do I still level up? Yeah, you'll still level up. Um, okay. But make a so const- I just get like a level of exhaustion. Make a con- make a Constitution save. Con save. Okay. Okay. Um, you, eight. You, you do not regain any hit points or spell slots, and you have one level of exhaustion. Cool. Um. We will resolve your spell before the end of the session. Um, as you leave the protection of the bubble to go out and channel your Feywild magic into the surrounding area. Um, as you guys are resting, um, Crayley, uh you feel uncomfortable during this long rest. Your whole body becomes itchy. You go in and out of a fretful sleep. And particularly at the edges of your mouth, just above the ridge of your lips and below your nostrils. And throughout the course of the night, tusks grow out of the front of your face. And your fur 
becomes a little thicker and kind of bristly. And you are now a shape changer. Uh, a wear bore, to be more specific. Um, Ooh. <clears throat> you can now use an action to polymorph into a boar uh, or a boar humanoid hybrid or just your true form. While you are in hybrid or boar form, um, you have immunity to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical attacks that are not made with silver weapons. Uh, this is happening from an attack that happened to you in the fight with the warband that you failed to save on that I've been Forgot about that. waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> but when you all wake up in the morning, Curly has a pair of tusks coming out of his face. Um, Is this part of the deal, Lap? <laughs> no, that ain't me. I'll pull at him. I heard she's like, what did you do with Grayley? <laughs> <laughs> um, as Lep is out there, doing his spell, um, kind of at the end of the rest, uh, when you kind of wake up and you're feeling your tusks or whatever, Smiler's there by your bedside, Crayley, and he says, um, you know, you should be careful giving away pieces of yourself. It's been a long time since I've been home, but some of the Fae aren't much different than devils, you know. They will take and take and take until there's not much left of you. And then he just kind of like wanders off. Um, I follow him and <laughs> uh, not like in an aggressive manner or anything, but I tap his shoulder and be like, I asked you about making this deal earlier. You said to essentially make my own decision. And he offered protection for myself, my friends, and those I love back home for my mother's bow and part of her memory and knowing my mom be able to have done anything to protect those he cares about. Why didn't you say anything then? He kind of stares at you with his wide eyes for a few moments and he says, Perhaps I've already given too much of myself away. There's a part of me that just likes to see what happens, you know? Well, I hope you know. I was willing to sacrifice part of my mom's memory to include you in part of this deal. To ensure you're protected and achieve your goal. which was noble and kind and brave and all of those nice words that people say. <clears throat> I suppose it's going to take me some time to find the pieces of myself that I've lost, but Watching that exchange made me realize that I've 
I've grown tired of making deals. Maybe I should have said something, but what's done is done now. I would just be cautious in making that a common practice for yourself. You never know what you've truly lost until it's gone. I think... Kraley's a little annoyed. <laughs> Honestly, um... No offense. It's my heart. Actually, offense. <laughs> I think this talk of what you've lost is still there within you, in my opinion. Why else risk your life on a bridge to save myself and my friends? in the falling city of El Terrell. You could say what you want in terms of potential path out and how we may or me will be able to help you with that, but it's still a risk you took. Oh, I'm not averse to risk. <clears throat> how long have you been here with your friends? A few days? I have been here 70 years. I didn't help you out of kindness or bravery. I don't believe you. <clears throat> I helped you because most of what's left in me is simply malice, hatred. You're saying hatred is what? Hatred for those Lich. who have wronged me, who still wander the wastelands here in Avernus freely without paying the price for what they've done to me. <sighs> well, perhaps what you say I've is I've insured true. Lep. I've insured Lep. We'll help you with that. At a cost to me. I thank you for your noble sacrifice. Thank you for your advice. Clearly, we'll walk away from at that point. Lep, um, and I suppose yeah. all, all of you is, uh, af and when you wake up, um, after the rest, uh, through the course of your night, um, the black smoke has washed off of Harmon's Hill here, and. The trees that remain, their bark is changed from an, a, a gray iron to more of a dull brown, resembling more like the natural state of, of, of a tree of, of wood, and they have sprouted small floral buds of varying vibrant colors. Um, the hill itself has sprouted patches of life kind of clinging to wherever it can. Uh, some of the local flora and fauna has grown up from the ground including patches of those black violets or whatever. Um, and 
and uh, after the rest, you know, Harmon's Hill kind of protrudes up out of Avernus, and you can kind of see, you know, a 360 area around you pretty decently. On the back side of the hill, you can see the river Styx continue to wind along through the landscape of Avernus. And um, from the hilltop, you guys could make some perception checks if you'd like. Mavathor um, and Lep, north of Harmon's Hill, uh, along the river Styx, on the far side of the river, <coughs> you can both see, um, I suppose you can see this as well, Crayley, um, a stout figure. Uh, a creature with a big spiny shell. Um, it seems as though there's some little campsite that this entity is erected on the other side of the river sticks from you. And you can see a little campfire. Uh, you can see like a line between two po posts. Um, and hanging from it are some iron lanterns and they all have little globes of light floating in them uh, there's like a stone wagon parked alongside the camp and this creature is casting a rod into the river Styx it's kind of weighted into the river Styx actually maybe up to its knees and you see him cast a rod and and eventually sort of reel it in every now and again. Um, they cast like once and reel and twice and the third time they reel and the line kind of tugs and you see them reeling faster and one of those little globes of light pops up out of the river, sticks on the end of his line, and he has this satisfied grin on his face, and he plucks the light off of the line and um, waddles over to the... where the lanterns are hanging, and he opens a empty one, and he shoves the globe in there, and... Uh, and then goes back to the edge of the river and casts his fishing rod again. And, uh... That is where we will end our session this week. Um... Yeah, level 8, I think, is... Ability score improvement, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you, yeah. guys, you guys um, at ability score improvement levels also get to choose a feat. Oh, I forgot to do that. <laughs> and uh, let me just see. Those were all pretty high perception checks. Let me go to the Avernus map real quick and see if any interesting features were spotted nearby. I I also imagine as um how with her like rolls up at he sees Kraylin, he's like, God's above. What happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't fucking know. Bad night of sleep. I thought it was a deal with Lep that I made. I think, no, that's not I think he might be afflicted with lycanthropy, which if you want to I can take care of that. You can? Oh yeah, I'm a cleric. 
everybody wants deals these days. What do you want in return? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's more what you want. I mean, do you want to be a wear boar for the rest of your life? Well, whatever these tusks are from, I would rather return to my fluffy self, please. <laughs> yeah, we, we can discuss payment options later he'll cast, uh, <laughs> yeah, he'll cast remove curse on Crayley. oh my gosh uh, nice um, oh, yeah. <laughs> the, tu- the little tusks kind of fall off your face uh, your Allah. fur kind of thins back out a, a little bit and uh um, you return to your n- normal, natural state, um, cured of this curse of lycanthropy. That didn't last very long. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you, Mavathor. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think we would, uh, like seeing that ugly mug around here for too long. (laughs) (laughs) Um, aside from the, uh, the stout turtle looking fellow uh, across the river, um, on the other side of Harmon's Hill, uh, the barren wastelands of Avernus around your current surrounding areas are fairly desolate um, aside from the patch of ground here on the hillside that is now uh, taking hold with new life Um, and uh, that is where we will end the session this week as always I appreciate you all thank you for playing and um I don't know how you guys feel about this new time, but uh, I, I hope it helps you, uh, um, Crayley. Uh, it does, definitely. Yeah, awesome. Okay, cool. Well, you guys have a good evening, and uh, I am going to go play Zariel and Elden Ring. <laughs> 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 All right, take it easy, guys. Have a good night. All right, see ya. You too. You too.